Hey everybody, I got a great video for you today. We're working on this CX-500 Scrambler I call Ranger Green. So, might be familiar, but today the main focus is, uh, let's just say, progression and rectifying some mistakes that I definitely made when I put this thing together about five years ago. So, definitely some cringy stuff, some, uh, some poor workmanship, but I'm going to go over those things, share them with you all, and definitely share a lot of information like how to bench sync your carburetors, how to adjust your valves, adjust your cam chain tension, and more. So definitely stick around. Well, I have two familiar CX500s in front of me. That one being Grandfather's Axe. I just recently finished that bike if you're unfamiliar with it. I have a bunch of videos on it, I'll link it above, but a quick rundown. It is a CX500 with a GL650 swapped in. I have a, a monoshock setup on it, a GSXR front end, Cognito wheels, we have the works. It's a very nice bike, it runs really well. Now this bike is one of my early customs. Now this is a, uh, as far as a year, I have no idea. It's a CDI bike, so it's a 1980 probably CX500 and it is a deluxe model. So this one I did as a scrambler. Both of these belong to the same customer and both of them need a little bit of work. Built this bike in about 2016, I guess, right when I was first getting going. So this is one of my very first custom bikes I've ever done. And uh, you know, I look at it now as compared to that thing especially, and I'm like, mm, there's some cringy things on there, but that was my skill level at the time. So. I mentioned both of these are of course here and they both need work. Now let me uh, kind of go over what each of them needs. Now Grandfather's Axe, this thing is going to be a really simple one. The, uh, the clutch cable broke on it so I have to go ahead and repair that and I think what I'm going to do is probably put in the factory clutch springs because this thing has some upgraded EBC units in it. So it's naturally just had a really stiff lever and uh, I think maybe I could have done a better customization of the cable originally. So I'm gonna work on maybe just doing a little bit different routing, trying to maybe swap in the original springs, as I said, making the clutch feel a little bit better and just overall a, uh, a better setup for this bike. So nothing, nothing too crazy there, little teething issues. Now this bike has been a freaking trooper uh, since about 2016. So it'll start up and run right now, but uh, it's always had like a little bit of a cough. This is like, you know, one of the first set of carburetors I ever dug my hands into. And there's definitely some things I could have done better. So I'm gonna pull the carbs off, we're gonna go through them and uh, probably just do some general maintenance on the bike, do a valve adjustment and just kind of, just give it a once over. So there's gonna be some items on here that I find that I'm not, you know, super satisfied with because my current standards are way higher than what I built this thing to, even though it's really cool, but uh, we all learn. So we're gonna dive into those carbs and I'll showcase maybe what, uh, what I did, did wrong back in the day, but we're gonna get them sorted. Now, when I did this bike, uh, obviously I was a, a lesser skilled, lesser experienced person, so I actually do not know what jets are in it at this point. I've long since forgot, so I know the carbs are gonna be kind of out, uh, out of tune. It would have never been done to the level it should have been, so this thing probably has a familiar cough that maybe many of you are experiencing on your bikes, but uh, the overall setup is a set of Uni PK92 filters, and these have kind of a pre-filter on them just to do the red with the some of the red accents on the bike. And then it has a, uh, I made the two into one for it. It's an inch and a half primary. And then it exits through the super trap, which uh, sounds really good. But like I said, it does run right now. So let's fire it up and you guys can hear kind of the cough. hear that cough and uh, when you're riding it once you get it under load it's not so bad but around idle just off idle it is very pronounced and uh, I have a feeling a lot of that is going to be because uh, the carbs are not synchronized they're not at least vacuum synchronized and the valves are likely a little bit out of spec as far as clearance is concerned so I'm definitely going to check those as well I'll have to do that in the morning whenever this thing's dead cold though now the cough is definitely on the right cylinder you can actually watch it move a little bit right here Figure it out. 
All right, it is the next day. We have Ranger Green in the shop and it is dead cold. So now it is time to check and confirm and adjust the valve clearance. So what you do for this, I'm now realizing this is a little bit more challenging on this bike, but behind this exhaust pipe is an access cover on the front of the engine. You can actually remove that, put a wrench on it, rotate it clockwise, and that rotates the engine that you line up to then adjust your valves. But once I get an extension on the wrench, I should be able to access that thing. I'll go ahead and remove the valve covers and we will get started on this. Okay, you just saw me take the seat and tank off this thing. And this is the first time that I've seen under the skin of this thing since I built it. A little bit worried about how I did it because obviously the name of the game or the goal is always progression. So looking under here, I have a simple fuse box here, clearly labeled. My cable management is not bad. This is a CDI bike, so it's just tucked up right in there. Now this particular bike, I never uh, wired in like turn signals or anything like that. So, you know, is what it is, but didn't need a whole lot as far as the harness. I do have a little bit more of a durable tape on this thing, so that's okay. And uh, I know I probably back in, at this period of time, I would have used uh, probably more like butt connectors and stuff versus uh, re-terminating stuff um, just because I didn't have the tools at the time or the know-how, but I do have a decent single ground to the frame there. Again, it looks like I was still focused uh, pretty good on cable management, making sure it's not going to be moving, making sure stuff that, ne that needs slack has slack, which is good. Now over here, this big old wound up section wire is actually for the GPS speedometer. So there is a GPS unit right up there. And obviously I'm not going to try to cut that wiring. I don't know how com complex it is. So there's just a, a lot of extra there. Right here we have a Trail Tech temperature unit and that gauge is right there. That's their TTO line. I actually just made a video on this doing, uh, doing the install on my KLR650. So um, link above to that video. But yeah, overall, um, not bad. I'm not, I'm not disappointed in how I wired this bike. Obviously, you know, I was of a different, different skill set at the time and it was the best I could do at that time. So. My anxiety has been decreased and I'm feeling good about it. So now I have room to pull the valve covers off. Let's go ahead and get to that and uh, move on. That is not bad. Okay, you can see the access cover right there. Go ahead and remove that. Keep our 17 is right on that right there and that's what we use to rotate the engine next up we're going to remove this access cover that way you can see our timing marks Now, a while we are in here, 
type thing, we want to adjust our cam chain tension. So I'm going to rotate the engine until we see the uh, top dead center on the left cylinder. It'll be a TL mark, and there is a small timing mark um, actually in the case right here. So we line those two up, and then from there, we release tension on this. And that's going to set our cam chain tension, Then we retighten it, and then we can proceed with our valve check. All right, guys, so I'm rotating the engine. And right now, the intake valves on the left cylinder are getting ready to close. They're closing now. Oop, rotate a little bit forward there. That should be our max advance mark. All right, you can see FL right there. Just past that, we're going to have our TL. That line marked up right there. That's top dead center on the left cylinder. And now we can mess with the cam chain tension. All right, now that the engine is in its correct position, we can go ahead and throw a wrench on this bolt here. We'll crack it loose. Okay. That should automatically adjust the cam chain tension. So now we can just tighten it again. And that's done. Now we can do the valves. Now being on the top dead center on the left cylinder here, we should see our rocker arms be uh, slightly loose. Like you should be able to wiggle them. So our exhaust side, and there's no there's no noise from this, but you can feel there's a little slack and that feels about right But our intake side I have absolutely no play So these are definitely too tight, but we're gonna go ahead and put a feeler gauge on them and get them right in spec Now on the exhaust side we should be at a point zero zero four inch gap and checking it here Slight drag in it, which is absolutely perfect. So no adjustment needed on this side and on the intake side, we use a 003 inch. I know it's a little bit faded. These are kind of old and I've used them a lot. So not even able to get these things in here. So this is a 10 millimeter jam nut. What we do is we just crack that loose and then we'll just rotate these a little bit, work them both in at the same time. And then we will tighten them down. And you want to make sure that whenever you go to tighten them down, you're always rechecking because it's gonna draw the threads up and take all the slack out and that will mess with your adjustment. So you have to get the adjustment correct after these are tightened. So right there, I would call that slightly tight. Cinch this down. See how it reacts. Still a little bit tight. Back it off a little bit. Retighten it. Feels pretty good. And we'll do this one. Slightly tight. That feels good there. If I tighten this one a little bit more. Okay, I like that. Cinch them down, check them one last time. Okay. All right, on to the other side. All right, now we're gonna rotate the engine to top dead center on the compression stroke on the 
right cylinder. So right now the intake valves are opening. Now they're closing. All right, so they are closed. Now we're gonna start our compression stroke. And we should be looking for our max timing mark. All right, there's one, there's two. We should have our fire right, our FR mark right there. Next up should be our TR mark, which is top right. Right there. And like before, we should be able to feel a little bit of slack in each of these. So I actually have a decent, I have, that feels about perfect there. Almost perfect there. So we're gonna double check. You should see 003 on the intake side. All right, we can get that one. There we go. It's probably a little tighter than what I want. So I'm gonna adjust this one. We will double check that. Okay, we have our 004 on this side. That could be a little tighter. That one's perfect. So we got two or four to adjust, but I'm going to adjust these and then uh, we'll move on to the next thing, which is the fuel system. Okay, just got the two valves in spec here, so both sides are good. Now we can go ahead and reinstall our cover on this side as well as the front of the engine. We'll put our valve covers back on and then we'll move on to the carburetors. So I am going to just pull these things off and then I'll show you guys what I'm looking for when I get them off. Obviously I have the carburetors off of this thing and the mission here is to figure out exactly why the thing had kind of that that cough on the right cylinder so we know that two valves on the uh, on the right side were just a slight bit out of whack probably not enough to really cause any issues here the left cylinder we adjusted to so kind of same thing so you know kind of a wash on that side but we know that that's likely not our issue and we have rectified it we've adjusted the cam chain timing that probably wasn't the issue here that would be uh, less of an isolated situation to the right cylinder more just an overall kind of running issue should it have been misadjusted or something like that but we're looking at the carburetors and right off the bat I can actually see that the throttle blades are slightly uh, like the gap on them the synchronization the, the gap is slightly different so I can actually visually see that these things are out of sync. That would definitely cause it. I have not looked at my mixture settings. I know that we have a little bit of a fuel leak uh, over on this side. It appears actually from the accelerator pump gasket, probably the accelerator pump O-ring on this side. And then beyond that, I got to pull the bowls and we will kind of dig in further. So uh, let me kind of uh, do some preliminary checks. I know one thing I've already done you want to make sure that the slides, your diaphragms, you can move them up and they drop back down and there's no dragging or anything like that. So that's important, but uh, yeah, let me get a, get a camera on this thing. We'll check the bench sink, see how far out we are, then we'll just start, start checking everything out. All right, looking at the carburetors. Look at the bottom of the throttle blade, kind of get a relative idea of the gap there. Move over to this side. It's a little tighter, right?
can't even really see light through that. So we know that the synchronization is off and the way we adjust that is this screw right here. So let me show you guys how to do a bench sync. Now to do a bench sync on these things, it's actually very simple. This is something you all should do, should you have done a carb rebuild. Unless you can do vacuum gauges, that's obviously optimal, but a bench sink is going to get you pretty close. So the idea is that the throttle blades are open the exact same amount. So let me show you my method here. Of course, I'm going to put some vacuum gauges on it when I'm done, but for now, this is going to be a good demonstration. Now, as I've mentioned, we'll make sure these things are open the same amount. So we need a tool to make sure they're open the same amount, and that is going to be a combination of two similar size metals or two similar sizes uh, of rod and then basically your feel. So I do a lot of TIG welding. So I have a, some stainless uh, filler rod here. I have commonly used two 16th inch drill bits. Same kind of thing. Okay, we have our two filler rods here and these things are obviously the exact same diameter because they came from the same piece. So I'm going to open the throttle, insert these like the top side, both throttles and what we're going to be doing is using our dexterity to kind of determine how close these are so this one is obviously tight this one I can move in and out so the, the fill rod is holding this throttle blade open and then we're going to match it on this side so I'm going to crack this loose and we'll start doing our adjustments it's just a little eight millimeter And this is starting to get a little bit more difficult. So back it out so we have some drag on it now. And now you want to try to match that drag with the other side. So that's getting closer. Alright, that is very close. You just want to try to make sure everything, you know, all things are equal here. Okay, I'm satisfied with that. And there we'll hold our set screw in place, tighten down our lock nut. And just like when we did the valves, we're going to double check our work. And see that that has now shifted. So we have to keep adjusting. All right. Back in business. All right, that is how we bench sync. So this is obviously not like a 100% exact science, but this is gonna get you really close and uh, close enough to, to definitely run it. I mean, this is a running bike before and already I know this would be drastically improved on the drivability side. So let's go ahead and continue on. I'm gonna look at my mixture screws and then we'll pull the bowls off. Okay, next up I wanna count the turns that we have these things set at. These should always be the set to the same. So, these are your idle air mixture screws. What you want to do is count half turns. We're going to go in clockwise until it barely seats. You do not want to force it. And then we're going to record how many turns that was in. And we'll take it out the same amount. It's half, one, one and a half, one and three quarters. So half, one, one and a half, one and three quarters. And hopefully this is the same. Half, one, one and a half, almost one and three quarters. So very close. So there's half, one, one and a half, one and three quarters. 
Okay, time for disassembly here. Now all of these screws are JIS, and for that we use a JIS screwdriver. I have these linked to my Amazon store along with some Vessel brand. Very important you use these and not a Phillips PH2. They're not the same thing, all right? They're absolutely not the same thing. And most of the time, you'll damage the screws So we've got a little corrosion right here. And this is our accelerator pump. And what this does is whenever you go to open the throttle, the, uh, the first thing to move really besides your throttle blades is this. Puts a little squirt of fuel into both carburetors through a transfer tube. And that tries to prevent a bog. It's kind of hard. If I have a compatible one, I'm going to go ahead and replace this. But we could just have a little extra paint right here. Obviously, I painted these carburetors, so that could be why it's not seating fully. All right, let's get the bowls off this thing. Ugh. Could not have done that with a Phillips. This is probably going to be tricky with the paint. Oh. More evidence of my prior inexperience. It's like I used a tiny bit of silicone. That'll definitely do it. It's amazing this thing ran that well without getting a bunch of this clogged up in the jets. But we progress. Also, there should be an O-ring right there. I'll have to look at the footage, but I did not see one. Okay, I'm going to continue the teardown and then we'll come up with an assessment. have stock jetting in this thing. The plugs look good for stock jetting, to tell you the truth. Oh, that's disgusting. these pretty far down and like the camera angle I'm kind of looking down at myself because man I'd give myself like a 1 out of 10 on my uh, rebuild abilities five years ago because not good it's like I had something against o-rings my uh, air cut off like my bleed valves those things didn't have o-rings either so uh, and neither did my mixture screws it was actually just the spring and then the rubber o-ring there was no um, metal washer between them so the o-rings themselves are a little bit tore up 
just like, what was I doing? But I'm very confident in my current abilities and uh, we're gonna go ahead and get these things cleaned up. So I will end up throwing these things in the ultrasonic. I still have to get out my uh, one of my secondary mains and then uh, I'm gonna leave my idle jet in there. I don't have the threaded one, so uh, I'm gonna flush it out the best I can, but I'm gonna leave that in there to avoid damage. So yeah, I will end up probably having to remove the paint on this. I might try turning the temperature way down to the ultrasonic and seeing if maybe the paint stays. It's really doubtful. I have this paint already, so I could just go give it a, a, a good dusting again to keep it the look of the bike. But uh, yeah, pretty, uh, pretty amazing it ran this well for what I'm finding. So, and yeah, we're gonna make it right. Shame on me. But, you know, obviously, this is done to um, a beginner's level. So everybody starts somewhere and I, you know, I've progressed. Again, I'm confident in my current abilities and uh, it's good that I'm not still doing this, but I know some of you guys have probably done stuff like this when you're starting out and you know what, if it gets the bike down the road, then that's cool. Um, just always try to do better the next time. And I think that's what's important. So anyway, it like, is what it is. I'm not, not too mad at it. Kind of cringy, but you know, we're progressing. So that's what I'm gonna call it for this video. Expect a part two very soon of full cleaning and reassembly of these carburetors. I'm gonna get these things on the bike today. We'll get it up and running, and you guys will definitely see that in the next episode, which I'll link here at the point where it's ready. So again, kind of reviewing, I definitely have made some mistakes in the past, like any like any human. So, and there's no bigger critic on myself than me. Am I proud of some of the work that I did in the past, you know, namely on the carburetors? No, but I'm, I'm, uh, I'm confident in my current abilities, if I, as I've said, and I, and I pride myself in doing better each time. So I always want to progress. And I just think it's important to show you guys that kind of thing, that, uh, that I make mistakes too, that, you know, I've, I am absolutely not perfect. I am learning just like anybody else, so uh, hopefully hopefully this kind of resonates with some people and uh, inspires you to just kind of keep pushing, keep learning, and, and you know, it's it may not be perfect, but, you know, get it out on the road. Just have some fun with it and just do better the next time. So anyway, I'm going to call it here. hope you guys like this one. If you guys have any questions, leave them below. I'll be sure to get right back to you. And definitely check the description below because I'm going to have some links on... Uh, probably some other articles on how to do these uh, processes that I showed you in more of a written, kind of clearly written form. So anyway, again, hope you guys like this one. Hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.